Hello, this is Joan Fernley, your French diction coach for choirs. And today I will be reading Compère Guillery. Now this is the third in my three-part series on French folk songs arranged by Vincent Dindy. But of course, no matter what version you might have, you can follow along with this diction video. Now, as usual, my video will be in three parts, beginning with the reading, followed by tips and tricks for singers and conductors, and concluding with the coaching session where you can work with me on the song line by line. Now, it turns out that Compère Guillery is in fact a historical figure and there's quite a legendary story about him. So I couldn't resist the rabbit hole and I will begin the video with a few minutes on a prologue giving you the backstory and also filling in the blanks on some of the words in the song that might seem a bit archaic. Now, of course, if you like what I do, like, share and subscribe as always, it's very encouraging for me. And of course, it helps the YouTube algorithm. It's going to help other people find this music. So now, without any further ado, let's begin with the prologue. The compère Guillery of our song is most likely Philippe Guillery, who was born in the late 1560s. And by the turn of the century, he was a living legend and not for good reason, because he was an outlaw. But his exploits made the news, so to speak, and his legend just became so embellished that he turned into a bit of a Robin Hood kind of character. He was the ringleader of a band of outlaws, just like Robin Hood. He hid in the forest where he could ambush his victims. But also he was considered to be quite clever, resourceful. He would always evade the law in this sort of cunning and witty way. And also he was considered quite honorable. He would not kill if he didn't have to, and he wouldn't pick on the poor. But this is where the comparisons end, and that is stuff of legend. But it's quite notable that he was already a legend in his time. And just nine years after he was executed in 1608, this book came out that lists a bunch of notable historical figures and includes Philippe Guillory. How did it happen that this Philippe Guillory of humble beginnings, the one of three brothers with a father that is a mason, a tradesman, and certainly not of noble birth like the legend would have it, how did he become this outlaw? Well, the circumstances at the time was that the wars of religion were raging between Protestants and Catholics, and the brothers joined the army. But by 1598, the King of France, Henry IV, signed the Edict of Nantes, which put an end to these wars. This meant that a, quite a large number of soldiers were demobilized and sent home. And they were sent home with nothing. They had no resources. They perhaps weren't practicing a trade. And inevitably, many of them turned to crime. And Guillory just simply stood out as quite the clever one who always evaded capture. And in fact, that story became so embellished that it became the stuff of many plays, especially in the 19th century. He was featured in children's books. And of course, he is the feature of our song. The first place I look to research is Wikipedia. And of course, you have to go a bit beyond, but it's always a good place to start. And that page raises a question that perhaps the song is not about Philippe Guillory, because the song talks about this gentleman who's out hunting partridges, climbs a tree, watches his dogs run around, falls out of the tree, breaks his leg, is nursed back to health by women from the local hospital. Hardly the story of this noble, legendary outlaw. And so could it be the story of somebody else? I would side with the mainstream thought that it is indeed the story and that there's quite a bit of metaphor, but there's also words in the song that are hints that this would be, in fact, Philippe Guillory. And this is the reason I wanted to tell you about this song. So let's look at some of these words. Our first word is right there in the title, compère. Now, if you were to ask a francophone today what that means, they would have this vague definition as sort of like a comrade or an army buddy. But it's, it's a bit of an archaic word. But I looked at the dictionary of the Académie Française and one of the older definitions that has been lost to time 
is of a con artist, and that really suits Guillory. Our second word or group of words is carabi and carabou. And I thought originally that these were just nonsense words that you find typically in French folk songs. But it turns out that it refers to the word carabin. And carabin is another of these words that has a definition that's been lost to time. And I turned once again to the Dictionnaire de l'Académie Française and I found this old definition that is contemporary to Guillory, and it is a military reference. It is a light cavalry soldier that was sent on reconnaissance missions. Perhaps Guillory was indeed a car uh, carabin, and in the song we say carabi because we simply want the word to rhyme with Guillory. Another hint that this song is indeed about Philippe Guillory is the reference to him hunting partridges along with his dogs. Now, of course, Philippe Guillory did not hunt partridges with dogs, but I think this was in fact a metaphor. Simply, the partridges are his victims and the dogs are his men that are doing the dirty work. And of course, he's climbed up a tree in order to ambush his victims. Next, we have Guillory falling out of the tree and breaking his leg. And it just so happens that in the legendary stories, there is a Guillory that does indeed fall out of a tree and break his leg. But this time, it's Guillaume, the younger brother. And at that time, he was the only surviving brother. The eldest had been killed, and Philip had already been executed for his crimes, and the law was closing in. And Guillaume was facing a number of archers, and they were retreating him and his band. And he climbed up a tree and as luck would have it, fell out of the tree and broke his leg. But he did still manage to get away. But nevertheless, the archers were far too numerous for Guillaume's band of outlaws. They overpowered them. And by the time all the dust settled, so the story goes, Guillaume was found hanging from a tree. Our song ends with Guillory being nursed back to health by the women from the local hospital, him kissing one of them and saying, that's how we are cured. And of course, that could just be the fun ending of the song. But there might even be a connection to the legend. The legend goes that he was married twice. Now, the first marriage could very well be historical, but the second one is likely the stuff of legend. And the legend goes that the woman was very rich, they were both in love, they got married and he didn't need any more money he led a and he led a peaceful existence. So you could say that kissing a woman resulted in him giving up his life of crime and being cured. Now the story both in legend and of course in reality didn't end well, eventually he was discovered. Now legend would have it that it ended in a blaze of glory in a siege, he was captured and eventually executed. The historical record was, is probably not so exciting. He likely got a taste of his own medicine and a clever nobleman would have trapped him and he would have simply been caught and that would have been the end of Guillory. Okay, it is time for the reading. And as I said at the beginning of the video, it doesn't matter which version you're singing from, whether it's the Dainty or another version. There are very few textual variations across the different versions of the song, and I will tackle them directly in the reading. Uh, there's it's worth mentioning also that Vincent Dainty does skip a couple of lyrics. And so while I've numbered the verses more or less according to his version, it does go a little off by the end of the song, but I'm sure you will be able to find your way around the song. Also worth noting, there are some words that are technically incorrect, but they are they're incorrect in the service of the song for rhyming and for scanning. So don't worry about those. I'll talk about those in the tips and tricks. I will begin with the refrain and then I won't repeat the refrain throughout the reading. Ti, ti, carabi, to, to, carabo. Compère Guillery, te l'eras-tu mouri? Now there is another version of the refrain that has to, to, carabo, marchand caraba. 
And also worth noting that the ending of Giri is either spelt with an I or a Y. Both are correct and they're pronounced the same. Giri. Now on to verse 1. Il était un petit homme qui s'appelait Guilleri Carabi. Il s'en fut à la chasse, à la chasse au perdri Carabi. Now in another version, instead of qui s'appelait Guilleri, you have appelé Guilleri. Now on to verse 2. Il monta sur un arbre pour voir ses chiens courir carabi. La branche vint à rompre et Guilleri tombi carabi. Now here, Vincent Dendy changes the refrain a little bit and he adds the sound of gunshots. And so it reads as pouf, pouf, carabi. Now on to verse 3. Il se cassa la jambe et le bras se démit carabi. Les dames de l'hôpital sont arrivées au bruit carabi. Now here you could do another liaison sont arrivés au bruit. It's one of those that is not necessary and today we wouldn't do it nearly as much as we might have done in the past. So I would say sont arrivés au bruit carabi. Now on to verse 4. L'une porte un nom plâtre, l'autre de la charpie carabi. On lui banda la jambe et le bras lui remit carabi. And finally, verse 5. Pour remercier ces dames, Guiri les embrassi carabi. Elle prouve que par les femmes, l'homme est toujours guéri carabi. Your first tip is how to pronounce nasal vowels when they are followed by a B or a P. And this is one of those sneaky pitfalls that bears repeating. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take, for example, the word compare, which is right out of the title and it gets repeated with every refrain. And the nasal sound is the O sound, the closed O, when, and the soft palate drops a little bit and air goes through the nose and that gives it its nasal quality. So we have OM that is pronounced as ON. And this sound is truly an ON followed by PER, CON, PER. And you'll notice that I'm not pronouncing the M. And this is what is very sneaky because the letter that follows is P and that requires you to close your lips. And so visually you see the M and you see a P and inevitably what happens is people will say compare and they will do the nasalized O but they will also pronounce the M and oftentimes they don't even realize that they're doing it. It's that sneaky. So if you need to draw an X right on that M so you have a very clean difference between con and pair and the M is simply not pronounced. It belongs to the O to give it that nasal quality. So here are a few examples and I'll just read through them. So the first one was compare. You have rompre, so not rompre, but rompre. The next word has the B, which is the same effect as the P. The lips have to close, so do put an X through that M. You have tombi, tombi. Then you have the nasalized ah sound, jambe. So again, it's not jambe. And then you have en plâtre. It's the same sound as jambe. You get en plâtre. And then your final word is embrassi. Embrassi. Your second tip is all about the sound 
E, and this is the perfect song to work on this sound. Now, of course, this sound is present in both English and French, but it's equally problematic in both languages because singers will typically go far too wide and say E as in cheese. And then the conductors will ask them to make the sound a bit more vertical, and then it goes dark as in cheese. So there isn't, doesn't seem to be this happy middle. And the reason for that is because we don't talk about the tongue nearly enough. And the, for the E sound, the tongue is very important. And you can figure this out by working on the vowels on their own without moving your lips. So you start with a vowel like ah, and you glide into E. Now you want to look at yourself in a mirror so that you're very aware that your lips aren't moving and you might even want to put your hands just around your lips to make sure nothing moves. All you want is to have the tongue move. Now the tongue starts very relaxed. The tip of the tongue can just be resting just behind the bottom teeth, nice and relaxed, just a very normal ah, and then glide into E, ah, E. And you'll notice how the tongue moves forward. It really curls and you can feel the tension. And you can practice many vowels and you can pick some words out of the song and start by omitting the consonants. So for instance, we have karabi. So I would practice this word by simply going from a to e. A, e. The word perdri, that's an e sound. I would practice e, e. And then I would throw in the consonants. Perdri. So the key is not to extend too much and to really involve the tongue in the pronunciation of E. Your third tip is all about the combination of U and I, U and E. So it's a perfect segue from tip number two. So we've already worked on the E sound and the E sound is fundamental to doing an U sound, which is not in the English language. So you start with an E and you round around it a lot and you'll get the U sound as long as nothing else moves. E, U. So in this example we have two words, lui and bruit. So we have those two sounds, U, I, lui and bruit. Now in phonetics usually the sounds aren't shown as two different sounds. You'll get that upside down H. Uh, to signal that V sound. Now the second case is G-U-I, as in guillerie. And in this case, we have a rule that trumps anything else. The U is there simply as a signal to harden the G, because normally G-I is pronounced G. So if we want guillerie, we need to signal that it's a hard G, and that's what the U is for. So we have the example of guillerie that comes up throughout the whole song. And notice I didn't say guillerie, it is guillerie. And we also have the word guéri. And this is the same rule because it's the second case where normally the G would be soft if it's followed by an E. So if we want a hard G, we need that U. So it becomes guéri. Well, you've made it this far and here's your bonus. I did speak a bit about this at the beginning of the video that I would explain a few misspelled words or certain strange words. And so the first one I've spoken about already, it's carabi, which is meant to rhyme with guillery, but the original word is carabin. And similarly, we have the line pour voir ses chiens courir. Now the verb should be courir, which is to run, but we want that to rhyme with guillery, so we drop the R. And we get the same thing in the refrain. And here we have a line that's a two for one special because we have two strange words. We have te lera tu mouri. So mouri is mourir, which is to die. And lera is laissera, which is to leave. And this line is, will you be left to die? Or more specifically, will you leave yourself to die? In other words, will they get you in the end? <laughs> now, the other uh, spelling mistake is in the word hôpital, which is spelt with an E, which is incorrect. Now, you could argue that spelling might not have been consistent in the 17th and 18th century, but Vincent Dainzi is a 19th century educated composer, and he wouldn't stand for poor spelling. So this is intentional. 
And this is so that the song can scan. We want that L of hôpital to be flipped and it creates an E sound. Les dames de l'hôpital. Now, the last word is not found in the Danzy arrangement, but I did mention it in the reading. It's in the refrain that instead of having Titi Carabi, Toto Carabo, we have Toto Carabo, Marchand Caraba. Now, initially, I thought it might have just been like Carabi, Carabo, Caraba. But then I was reminded of the story of Puss in Boots. The fairy tale goes that three sons inherited. One got, I think, the house. The other one, I think, the horse or something like that. But the last one got a cat. That's it. And he thought, well, after I've eaten the cat and sold off the fur, I'll have nothing left. The cat heard this and he feared for his life. So the whole story is about the cat passing off his master as the Marquis de Caraba, which is a completely false title. Both he's not a noble man and also Caraba just simply doesn't exist. So basically the cat is a con artist, much like Guillory to save his own skin. And so to be a merchant of Caraba is you could think of it as a merchant of dreams or false dreams, false hopes. I also found the mention of Caraba in various 18th century documents, such as this one from 1781, which just by looking at the table of contents, you can see that it covers everything you ever wanted to know about Paris. A Caraba refers to public transportation, and here's a brief highlight. The public is poorly served. The cars are inconvenient, too narrow. We are crushed and compressed. On the road to Versailles, it's even worse. The carriages are open to all winds. We burn in the summer, we freeze in the winter. The dust suffocates you, or you're soaked when it rains. And who knows the majestic caraba drawn by six horses? It contains a kind of long cage, dirty and fetid. It carries 20 people, indecently pressed and suffocated. The woes of public transit are certainly not new, and no doubt these riders felt conned into paying up, just like Guillory would have conned people out of their money. This is the coaching session. Thank you for sticking around and working with me. And we'll start with the refrain, and then I won't repeat it for the rest. We'll just then do the verses one after the other, like I did for the reading. So in the refrain, the first line, you have three very bright and very clear vowels. We have I, A, and O. So it's a nice closed O. Titi, carabi, toto, carabo. And the A sound, it's a very bright, it's not an sound. Now the other thing about this song is that you have a lot of bright T's, very crispy T's. You really want to feel like the T, the tip of the T is very intentional. Titi, carabi, toto, carabo. And then we have compère guillery. So again we have that O sound that I spoke about earlier and the M is silent. Compère Guillery. And you have that Y sound with the double L, Guillery. Then we have Te l'era tu mouri. And so you have the U in tu. So that's the vowel that you should practice with an E sound. E, U. Just simply by rounding around the E. Te l'era tu mouri. And the U sound is very important to make that sound very high up. Just imagine that it's sitting right around your nose because otherwise it can sound like mori, like a mooing cow. <laughs> Te l'era tu mori. It's almost like a question and it is a question here. Now we move on to the first verse. Il était un petit so you'll notice there are a lot of liaisons. So we, French is a very smooth language. We put a lot of liaisons. Now over time some of these have disappeared, but they're, they're very useful to do in singing. So again you have all those T's in this line and it's really worth making those T's very pointy. Now the word uh is um, a sound that has evolved 
over time, a lot of French speakers will say un, un petit homme. Il était un petit homme. I'm exaggerating a bit, but it's to make the distinction that you really should sing il était un, un petit homme. Uh. So it's the uh sound that is nasalized. Then you have qui s'appelait Guillery Carabi. Now I'm not going to repeat Carabi every time throughout the coaching. I think you get it now. Uh, so at the beginning we have qui s'appelait. Now Q U I is a lot like G U I. You want to have that hard K sound. It's a it's a whole other category, but just make sure you're not going qui. It's qui. Qui like a K sound. S'appelait. Guillery. Il s'en fut à la chasse. Fu is a U sound, so you definitely want to work on that. Il s'en fut à la chasse. Then you have à la chasse au perdri. So we have the liaison, we drop the E at the end of chasse and we connect the S to O. Verse 2. Il monta sur un arbre. And you have the O-N, the nasalized O sound, monta. I didn't speak about all the nasalized O sounds. I, in the tips and tricks, I focused on the ones with the P's and the B's because those are the ones that really trip people up. But keep that in mind. It's not monta, it's monta, monta. Il monta sur un arbre. Pour voir ses chiens courir. Now the word c'est, S-E-S, and all these variants, L-E-S, S-E-S, M-E-S, and so on. In spoken French, they're pronounced more like an A sound. But in singing, we still pronounce E. But you might have a conductor or a vocal coach that tells you to say ses chiens and not ses chiens. I still use E in, definitely in singing. But in speech, I sometimes default into the E. So it's a bit of both. Pour voir ses chiens courir. Now the word voir is a combined vowel sound. It is a... V you get this W effect. Voir. Voir. And it's an A sound. So it's not voir. It's voir. La branche va à rompre. I think this one is quite straightforward. We have a lot of nasalized sounds. We have the en sound, la branche, vin, un sound, vin à rompre. And that's a one where you don't want to pronounce the M. Et guillery, tombi. Tombi, we saw that in the tips and tricks. Make sure you don't pronounce the M. And here we had, uh, the, in the refrain by Vincent Dendy, we had the word poof. Poof. So it's an oo, just like an owl. Hoo hoo. Poof, poof. And now into verse three. Il se cassa la jambe. Il se cassa la jambe. So you have those bright ah sounds. Moving on. Et le bras se démit. Again, bras is very bright. The rest is quite straightforward. Just make sure you don't pronounce the T at the end of demi. Les dames de l'hôpital. Les dames de l'hôpital. Hôpital, it's very important to have a nice round closed O because you have the little accent on top of the O. It's called an accent circonflex. It's a little hat on top of the O and that's your signal to make it very closed. Hôpital. Then we have sont arrivés au bruit. Verse 4. Luna porte so we do the liaison, we drop the E of une, but we keep the U sound. L'une apporte, and then we drop the E, apporte non plâtre. And here we have that accent again on the word en plâtre on top of the A sound. And that's your signal to darken the A into a more closed A, en plâtre, not en plâtre. And the next line we have l'autre de la charpie. So AU is an O sound, l'autre de la charpie. 
on lui banda la jambe. So, banda and jambe, that en sound is the same. And finally, et le bras lui remis. I think that's quite straightforward. We've seen all these sounds already. And finally, into verse 5, pour remercier ces dames. So we have a nice ou sound on pour. And then we have a good remercier. Just really pronounce those R's. Of course, the last R is an A sound. And it's very important not to do remercier. There's no diphthong there. It's remercier. A sound. And then we have guiri. We've dropped the E here because uh, we just don't have enough room <laughs> for it to scan properly. Guiri, we just do guiri. Les embrassis, les embrassis. And then here's an example where we drop uh, ending E's. Instead of saying elle prouve, we say elle prouve. And that again is so that the song can scan properly. Elle prouve que par les femmes. So that O sound is just like pour at the beginning of the verse. And the last line, l'homme est toujours guéri. Well, there you have it, compère guéri. This is the last of my three-part series on these folk song arrangements by Vincent Dindy. You can find Cadet Roussel and En passant par la Lorraine in the description box below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, bye!